Last time on Layton Brothers Mystery Room. Boom, boom, boom. Boom! And now back to breaking people's hearts. Literally. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to some more Layton Brothers Mystery Room. The last time we left off, we finished the first case and got started and, you know, got to know all the characters and, uh, now we're gonna get back into the game and, uh, Start with the second case, mm. which is the bungled burglary, I think. Ah, oh, God, what do I give you? Ow! Achoo! Oh, Fendi, huh? Not here. Can I help you, Miss? <laughs> Sorry, I was like, wait, was the voice? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're not gonna bother with the aspect. She shows up at the beginning of the case and at the end of the case, so it doesn't really matter. I've got a young woman in here, has he? My name's Florence Sick. Ha ha ha. You know, it took me until I said it out loud to just get that. Ha <laughs> ha. It's you. I work at the lab. Ah, oh, hello, Florence. You're actually on time today, I see. Not funny, Al. You should be ashamed of yourself bringing a woman back here. No, I just started working here. I'm Lucy. Lucy Baker. I need to see some actual words so I can get the accent right. Oh, new blood, is it? Well, anyway, enough. <coughs> that was a weird sneeze, but whatever. Preamble. I want you to look into a case. We sent our lab report already. Over already. I can. Uh... It's not like you'd ask for help with a case, Florence. Is it especially puzzling? It's as clear as a test tube. A burglar broke into a flat and phew, killed one of the residents. Well, if it's that black and white, how come you want us to get involved? Because it doesn't add up. Oh. The suspect is suspicious as they come. He's made a statement already, but I'm certain there's more to it than achoo, meets the eye. I can't abide the thought of the case being closed after I, before I've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. So you want the professor to look into it and figure out what's niggling you, is that it? Yes. Would you mind, professor? I'm not sure I like you calling me that, Florence. If that's your only objection, I presume you'll take it on, professor. If you promise to make that the last time you address me like that. Al, you have a deal. So where's the file? Didn't I say I already sent it over? Oh, yes, here it is. Yes, we'll start investigating at once. Just know this, if you fail to solve it, I swear I'll keep calling you Professor until the end of your days. Chew! Lucy, we have we have to solve this case. Failure is not an option. I pr professionalism will see us through? <laughs> nice save, Lucy. In our case, it just that came up just as I was starting to get used to working in, in the for a mystery room with the professor. Happened in a fairly ordinary studio flat. I'm just gonna say it in the normal voice because I need to read these. I were used to seeing blood by now. The male victim case covered in that and broken glass. There were three suspects. I remember being surprised by the clever trick the killer employed, but I wonder the reason why the case stuck on my mind. Oh no. You see, that was the first time I saw the other side of the professor. I think the voice I'm doing now sounds a bit less feminine and but a bit more British, which I think will help the voice. Right, let me tell you what we know. The victim in this case is a young male murdered in his first floor flat. We've already managed to identify him and he's something of a loose cannon. Oh. Yes, yeah, a certain Jack Potsby. The incident occurred a few days ago, just after midnight. His wife, a woman by the name of Goldby Potsby Man, Goldby Potsby Man, Man, uh, was having a shower when she heard a scream. She ran out of the bathroom to see her husband lying on the floor and the culprit running away. According to her statement, the killer was a muscular man dressed entirely in black. Uh, that should give us a good head start with finding him then, eh? Well, the well, the block's caretaker who was on duty at the time heard the sound of glass breaking. He ran upstairs and knocked on Potsby's doors, whereupon the wife told him about the intruder. Wasting no time, the caretaker conducted a search of the grounds and apprehended a suspicious man. He got him? Uh, what did they need us for, then? There's not for us to do, surely. Well, the apprehended man is an alibi of sorts. He's a, no he, bleh, he's a known petty criminal by the name of Buster Nix. I get it, I get it. Ah. He claims he was attempting to break and enter a ground floor flat at the time. Oh, very nice. The lie some people tell. He says he ran off when he heard the sound of shattering glass. In his statement, however, he claims he didn't see anyone coming from the floor above. Of course he didn't, because it were him that did it. 
The thieving numpty's incriminating himself with that. I think not. If he wanted to deceive us, he'd be claiming he did see someone else running away. Surely. Oh, I suppose you're right. That wouldn't make more sense. That's what's really bothering me. If you conclude Nix is telling the truth, things get very complicated. Don't they just? So let's start making some deductions, shall we? Do you think you can determine who did it from the crime scene and witness statements we have? You're going to put me on the spot again, are you? I'll tell you what. First, let me fill you in on the three suspects. To start off, of course, we have the burglar, Buster Nix. Very suspiciously, he was caught in the gardens around the block of flats immediately after the incident. But there's a statement. Don't forget, if it really is our man, then what he said doesn't make sense. No, quite. We must be careful not to jump to any conclusions. Next is the caretaker. His actions from what the incident occurred to what he to when he caught Nick seems to be nothing but laudable. He could have always ended engineered it that way though, couldn't he? Finally, the victim's wife, Miss Goldby Potts Mimon. She claims to have been showering at the time of the incident and was the one who discovered the victim. Wow, what a stunner! Oh really, is she? Are you joking? Well anyway, that's what we know about the suspects. Now I've sent the reconstruction device to include all the info we've gleaned so far for your perusal. We're a little short on details for you to say with any certainty at this stage, but... What's your gut instinct, Lucy? Who do you think the culprit is? Once you've had a think about that, start trying to make some logical deductions. So I just like to identify the killer immediately, personally. Who do you think did it? So when I first played this, um... I didn't know who did it, but I, uh... My gut feeling was that it was the wife, actually, and I guess we'll see. Interesting, what we'll brings you to that conclusion? She was the one that found the body. Once you see it makes no sense for that thief Nix to have given a false statement, she's next on the list. I can't say it's a compelling deduction, but I think you're right to suspect the wife. In fact, I'd say there's a... Boom! I love this part. Boom! 96.4% probability that Potsby Mann is the culprit. You're pretty sure of yourself again, aren't you, Professor? Well, there's still an uncomfortable 3.6 bad of uncertainty that we must eliminate. I need to speak directly in to the suspect in order to clear up one or two loose ends. I assume you mean... Our prime suspect, Miss Goldie Potts be Mon. Aye! Though it's not officially related to this case, the woman has an extremely worrying history. She's had three previous marriages, every one of which has ended with her spouse dying. Ooh. Well, that's, uh... Give over! Talk about leaving a trail! The police and insurance companies investigated the incidents, of course, but they couldn't find any indication of foul play. Maybe she's just dead unlucky then, do you think? Let's reserve judgment on that until we've met the woman in person. She should be here any minute. Do you think she has any idea what onto her? To help us with our investigation was the way I put it when I asked her to come here. She probably knows. Guess we'll have to try and catch her off guard then, eh? Yes, but I don't expect she'll give, us, she'll give much away. But as we home in on the truth, hopefully she'll get flustered. Can I really help, Lucy? Sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't sound like it's going to be a walk in the park, but I'll do what I can. Bing bong. Good, because I believe she's here. Now, are you the gentleman who requests my presence here? What the? Miss Goldby Potsman, man. That is my name. A pleasure to meet you, I'm sure. Sorry, I have to dif differentiate their voice somehow, and, you know, it kind of loses the effect, but whatever. And, uh, who's this fellow with you? Well, I thought that was perfectly plain. Being here is my new man. <laughs> You've got a new fellow already, but your husband's barely cold. Husband? Oh, yes, I did have a husband, that's right. Yeah, talk about unfeeling. And what's that you got around your fellow's neck? A collar? Isn't it swell? I chose it myself. Unbelievable. You can't do that. Well, I do declare. The police interfering in a young lady's private affairs with a heart. No, that's not what I meant at all. I were... Miss Potsby Mon, we fully respect your privacy and your relationship with this man is not a concern. However, I wonder if we might ask your friend to leave us alone while we discuss the case. Being as my best friend, Inspector, we have no secrets between us. If I say stay, he stays. I'm afraid I cannot allow information about the case to be revealed to a third party. Please, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, very well. Bingo, homeboy, go wait for me under the porch. Oh? Now, boy! Oh. Is he a dog? <laughs> like, literally a dog. <laughs> Maybe. 
Thank you. Now allow me to introduce myself, if a little late. I'm Inspector Leighton. And I'm Lucy Baker, the professor's assistant. Now what is it that you want with little old me? I already gave the nice gentleman my statement. Well, everyone knows it was the no good outlaw who committed this heinous crime. Indeed, as likely as that may seem, there are a number of issues we still need to clear up. Oh really, Inspector? Well, two issues to be precise. First, the exact circumstances of the victim's death. We need to establish whether or not he was really killed by an intruder. I've already told you what I saw. I saw the intruder with my own eyes. Secondly, there's the intruder's point of entry. How, exactly how did the culprit enter the flat? Why, through the window, of course. You only need to look at the scene to know that. Have you ever read my statement, Inspector? Naturally, I've read all the witness statements. It's our job to iron out all these little details one by one, you see. Hope you wouldn't mind helping us. It will be my pleasure if it helps to bring that murdering outlaw to justice. Good, so Lucy, shall we begin our investigation? Aye, let's get stuck in, Professor. So these are the issues we still need to clear up about the case, are they? Yeah, so if we can solve these little riddles, it will lead us to the truth about what happened. Why, they're both plain as day. Perhaps what we need to confirm that they're as clear cut as it seems. Lucy, what do you want to start? Let's see now. Um, I'll go left to right, so nature of attack. We can't make any useful inductions until we've established exactly how the victim was killed. We should start by examining the body. Right you are. Huh. I love the investigation theme in this game. It's really cool. So let's explore the scene of the crime. If anything jogs your memory, Miss Potspiman, do tell us. I'm sure I don't see the point of all this carry-on when I have already told you the criminal is. I'm afraid this is just a procedure we always follow, so if you wouldn't mind playing along. Alright, Lucy, let's get started. Aye, let's see if we can't find someone the killer left behind by mistake. Are you sure this... Are you sure this little spring chicken is up to the task, Inspector? She seems mighty inexperienced. What about a poor defenseless young widow like me do if she was falsely accused by a rookie? Oh, please! There's no need for concern. I should be keeping a close eye to make sure everything is done in the proper way. Nice. Investigate the body. Yo, Alfendi's so cool. He's the best character in this game. The victim's dead body. He was fatally stabbed in the back. No other signs of external injury. Right, I think you've established the cause of death now, haven't you? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Aye, he was fatally stabbed. Then Nyx wasn't carrying a like wasn't carrying a likely murder weapon, so. So it must have been disposed of somewhere in this room. Well, I do declare, that murdering thief just cast aside his weapon right here in my home. And I am I to understand you have no idea what this murder weapon even is. Do you know quite what you're doing, Inspector? Please be patient. Lucy, we need to locate the murder weapon. I'll track it down, Professor. Don't you worry. I do believe you two need a helping hand. The thief fled the balcony. Maybe look out maybe look there. Well, one of the options would be the broken glass, so I guess we'll uh try that out. These shards of glass are pretty sharp, Professor! You mean one of the larger ones could have been a makeshift weapon? That's what I was thinking, I Yes, yeah, so the investigating officers had the same idea, so forensic studied every contender. Uh oh. Here comes the butt. But none of the shards match the size and shape of the victim's wound. I knew it. <laughs> Worth a shot. Oh my, what terrible luck. Keep looking, Lucy. What else could have been used? Well, what's here? A kitchen? Zoom in on that baby, how about a kitchen knife? I can, there's some kitchen knives here, Professor. Could be the job. That would be consistent with the long, thin blade that Forensics tells us the victim was stabbed with. Aye, he was skilled with one of these, all right. Right in the middle of his back. Sadly not. That's not the weapon we're looking for. Oh, why not? Has the officer already found those knives in forensics and examined them for traces of blood? No one was found. In fact, they look almost brand new. I'd say the inhabitants of this flat rarely cooked. Now, Inspector, whether we cooked for ourselves or not is surely none of your business. No pity. Thought I'd honor something with that. I mean, you feel like you'll never find the murder weapon at all. On the contrary, we'll most certainly find it. Lucy, let's keep looking. When is all this carry-on going to end? My poor heart surely cannot take much more. The police have already turned my home upside down and found no trace of a murder weapon. 
to tell you she'd be looking at the grounds where the murdering outlaw was caught instead. We've already completed a thorough search of the surrounding area. That wicked man must have just swallowed it, mustn't he? What? Suck a knife down his throat? Give over! Now don't tell me you've never seen a sword swallower before. <laughs> that's a that's a magic trick, that's not a real thing. <laughs> Perhaps we should take a step back and examine the facts we know about the murder weapon again. Lucy, there was I there were no other obvious signs of physical trauma on the victim, correct? What does that tell you? He was stabbed in the back, and there's no other wounds, so Uh it was totally out of the blue if it was in his back. Ah. If he's no other injuries and he was stabbed in the back, I'd say he were caught totally unawares. I couldn't agree more. So we can be fairly certain the victim will kill in the surprise attack. Oh my poor Jack, that cowardly thief murdering him without even looking him in the eye. I don't I don't like this character in general, but I don't like the voice I'm giving them either, so it's like, ah I want you to just die. That man's beyond contempt. Uh, that would be nothing short of a miracle. After all, we're talking about a complete stranger entering the room. I there's no way you wouldn't have put up a fight. That makes no sense at all. Oh! Wow, I got a crack. Poor Jack must have drifted off to sleep in front of the telly. My poor honey did a lot. I, I know, I added that in, whatever. <laughs> that must be the reason why he did not notice the murderous villain breaking into the apartment. That's an interesting new piece of information. We'll file it, we'll file it as a witness statement, if you don't mind. I'd say that's more or less all we can do about the circumstances of death at this stage. Alright. <laughs> Method of entry. So what... Trying to work out how the killer got the room, are we? That's right. Now I am quite sure that cannot be more plain. Why, you need only look at the shattered glass to know if the outlaw came in through the window. That's the only possible way in, is it? Isn't there some other way into the flat other than through the window? I'll have a look around and see what I can figure out, Professor. Well, I mean, a pretty obvious one. How would you get into a house? Maybe through the door. <laughs> yeah, door. This is the way in. If the door were locked and the key were inside the flat at the time, then it's plain to see the outlaw did not walk in through the door, as I've already said, which I do declare brings us back to the window. The murdering thief broke in, in through the window and stabbed my poor Jack in the back. I find that hard to believe. What do you, Lucy, what do you think? Hey, uh, when the, what if the door weren't locked when he broke in? It could have been locked later on, no? A poor, simple little girl. Do you not notice the doors on these apartments are locked by themselves? And how about maybe someone let him in? How about that? I can assure you, I've ne I had never set eyes on that man before, and neither am my husband. Why would Jack let a stranger in his home? Are you implying that I let the outlaw inside myself? Let us not forget any man entering the building would have had to pass the caretaker. Indeed, seems unlikely that Nick's could have aimed entries through the flat through the door. We should examine the window in more detail, Lucy. Aye, all right, Professor. I'll give it a good going over. Investigate the window. Alrighty. Oh, right It obviously smashed it liberally, eh? Can you ascertain from which side the window was broken? Well, it's going into the flat, so it would have to be from outside on the balcony. And we're broken from the outside, from the balcony. And how do we know this? Uh, because of where the broken glass fell, most of it's inside the room. Exactly. This window was clearly smashed with some, with some considerable force from the outside. Now at last we believe my statement is true. The outlaw broke into my home and murdered my husband. Professor, it does sit. I have not finished, young lady. There is a piece of final evidence on the balcony. Something left behind by the outlaw. But of course you would have already noticed something so obvious, wouldn't you? Find the evidence on the balcony. Well, <laughs> no, I actually haven't looked at the balcony at all, but I mean, here it is. Bloodstained towel. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the evidence. Okay. Eh, there's a bloodstained towel on the balcony here, Professor. Please do not tell me you failed to notice such an obvious piece of evidence before. No, I knew it were there. I was just getting around to it, that's all. Ah, is that so? It would appear the towel used was... No, it would appear to be a towel used to wipe the blood off the murder weapon. But why has he been chucked out there on the balcony? Now surely you can figure that out without my help. Clearly the outlaw threw it away there after he stabbed my husband and fled over the balcony. Well, maybe I... There's one thing I'd like to double check. 
Let's assume that the culprit did indeed break the window in order to get inside the flat, the loud noise would have alerted everyone to the intrusion. Does that not strike you as a rather clumsy approach for a seasoned housebreaker? The window was locked, why the outlaw had no choice. It was locked? Can you be sure of that? I do declare I can. I distinctly remember it was locked from before. I always check all the doors and windows before I denude my body to take a shower, Inspector. Very reassuring to no, know. I'm pleased we can clear that up. Lucy, would you make a, re make a record of that, would you? It's fundamental of the case. I'm delighted to see that we are finally seeing eye to eye. Keep the locked door in mind, Lucy. I'll make it a medal now, Professor. There's one more thing I'd like to clear up, if I may. And what might that be? You've already mentioned it in your statement, but did you hear the noise of the window smashing? Oh. I most certainly did. Well, I still remember it now. I was in the shower at the time. Then I heard my husband scream. I came around right of the bathroom and saw the outlaw. As I said in my statement, he was wearing black from head to toe, and he fled over the balcony. You stand by your statement. That's exactly what happened. Well, I hope you're not implying that I'm a liar, Inspector. I merely want to confirm the accuracy of your very important statement. Thank you very much. Fanny's so cool, dude. I love him so much. He's like... One of my favorite lead characters. Well, I do believe the issues that will trouble you no more. We've proven that outlaw is guilty. Oh, I. What is Ellie trying to say? The victim was taken by surprise and stabbed from behind. Smashing your way through a window hardly qualifies for a surprise attack, does it? My poor, sorry simpleton, you still fail to understand. My husband was sleeping at the time. He did not hear the window, not hear the outlaw breaking the window. Give over! Are you really- Are you doubting me? You've already taken such a long time establishing that the window was smashed from the outside. That in itself is surely compelling evidence that the outlaw broke into my home as I had described. Eh, uh, there can be no room for doubt. I would kindly request that you allow me to go back to my home now, Inspector. Of course. Thank you very much for your cooperation. We shall get our files in order now, after all the new information you've given us. I believe that will be for the best. Such a simple case as this can surely be laid to rest now. One last thing. Yes? Sorry, that was like a super exclamation bubble, so I was confused. If we happen to cross any other awkward issues, I presume you wouldn't mind helping us again. As long as you're not wasting my time, Inspector, I should be glad to help. Thank you. I wish you all the best. Much obliged, I'm sure. Professor, are you sure about just letting her go like that? We aren't going to reach a conclusion like that. She knows that we suspect her. Sorry, Professor. That's my fault. I got her a bit head up. Don't apologize. We all work. We all get worked up sometimes. Anyway, I'm quite certain now that she is the culprit. Aye, likewise. You can tell she's hiding something by the way she got... By the way she's that quick to get Marty. I'm convinced she hid the murder weapon somewhere in the room after she killed her husband. She wouldn't have had time to dispose of it outside before the caretaker arrived. Then she arranged the scene to look like an intruder broke in from the outside. However, there's an inconsistency between the course of events she describes and the scene she set up. Is there? Of course. There's no such thing as a perfect lie, Lucy. The murder weapon is somewhere at the scene of the crime, without question. Well, if I can find it, we'll blast a whopping great hole in that double-barreled bimbo story! There are two issues. The murder weapon, and the way she set the scene to make it look like a break-in. Right. Okay. So, I mean, the big one, the big obvious one to me is the quote-unquote decisive evidence, but it's not really decisive. We need to locate some irrefutable proof that shows Possum Mon's statement to be false. I hear you, Professor. It's, uh, I mean, I got this on my first playthrough, too. It didn't take me. Because she said she heard the scream, then the window break, but look at the broken glass. It's under the victim. Eh, what about this, Professor? This could be it. The broken glass? Which statement would that be inconsistent with? Boom! You've got it! I've got it! Yes, the broken glass is quite clearly inconsistent with that statement. We've backed Pathman Mon to a corner now. This proves she's been lying. Of course, you appreciate what the inconsistency is exactly, don't you? Aye, the bits of broken glass are on top of the body, not underneath it. That's all wrong! Precisely. The, the, this puts paid to the idea that an intruder broke in via the window and killed Potsby. Well spotted, Lucy. <laughs> Ba -ba -da. Now the murder weapon. Let's see if we can find the murder weapon the suspect used. She must have hidden it somewhere here. Judging by the shape of the victim's wound, we're looking for something long and thin. 
long and thin. Right, I'll get looking. Okay, so this took me a million years to find. Um, because I really just didn't think of it. But, uh, it's, it's the clock. Well, part of the clock, you'll see, but it literally took me so long. This clock's got me thinking, Professor. Hmm, you could have a closer look at it then, Lucy. You might be on to something. Examine the clock in detail. Resume investigations. Zoom in on that boy. Clock hands. This glass cover. It opens and closes, that's important to know. And the pendulum, which is, uh... Yeah, you know, it's there. <laughs> so, you've had a chance to examine the clock in detail now? Aye. And what do you think? Is there any way it could have been used as the murder weapon at all? Uh, the clock hands. You can tell one of them is Ben, by the way, I didn't read it. Yes! The hand! It's long and thin, alright, and pretty sharp, too. If you look closely, you'll notice it's also slightly bent. Aye, there's every chance this is in- This is what we're used to do the fellow in. I agree. Which means the matter weapon were in the room from right from the start. And having committed the crime, the perpetrator hid it on the premises. In other words, the culprit was in the flat before, during, and after the crime. An excellent find, Lucy. <laughs> I'm that shuffed. Ask Francis to go over the clock hand again, won't you? If it really was the matter weapon, they should be able to find traces of possibly blood on it. Will do. All right, boys, it's time. Boom! You know who our culprit is now. Don't mind that message. <laughs> That's everything. We tied up all the loose ends, haven't we? Yes, in theory, at least. How do you mean? We haven't qu got quite. We haven't quite got enough to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Potsby Mon was responsible. But that's actually a job for a lawyer, so whatever. <laughs> Why do you say that? Never mind. Why don't you call a suspect in, and we'll take it from there. This time we'll get her to tell us the truth, whether she likes it or not. Eee, I can't wait! <gasps> Let's go. Oh my, keep your furry friend under control! Well, I do declare, my furry friend, as you put it, does have a name, Miss Baker. Bingo, but I call him Bing. Why can't I approve of the caller? But I hope that chain's a good one. At the risk of repeating myself, Miss Potsmuon, would you mind, uh... Yes, yes, I know. Bing, go wait for me in the car, boy. The trunk's open. I'm sure the good inspector will not be keeping me long. Arf, arf! Oh, I love this song so much! <laughs> now, whatever affairs we still have to discuss, Inspector, I trust we can do so quickly. I always go to the park with Bing around this time of day. Don't worry, Miss Poppy Mom. I'm fairly sure this will be the last time we meet. So what exactly requires my attention now, may I ask? I assume you finally conclude that it was the outlaw who murdered my husband. On the contrary, we're now com quite certain Mr. Nix is completely innocent in this matter. If you cast your mind back to our previous conversation, we established that the victim was... Uh, stabbed from the back. Mm -hmm. Boom! The victim was stabbed from behind without warning. He was caught completely unawares. I, Mr. Potsby, had no idea what was coming. There's no way Nix could have done it if he came in the way you described. As I've already told you more than once, Jack was inclined to fall asleep while walking, watching the television. Of course, we cannot deny the possibility that your husband was indeed asleep at the time. However, if that were truly the case, it would be at odds with something else that had happened. In other words, um, the window was smashed. Boom! Because the window was shattered. All that glass breaking would have made it right in and no mistake. No one could have slept through that. There's no way Mr. Potsby, Potsby wouldn't have woken up. I do declare, you are as slow as a snail sometimes, Miss Baker. Our husband was quite exhausted that day. Why are you sleeping like a log? Even the clatter of the window breaking would surely not arouse them. Well, there's not more to be said on that front then, I suppose. I only when that outlaw drove his nice to my poor husband's back did he wake up with a ch spine-chilling scream. And it was on hearing that scream that you ran out of the bathroom to see what was happening. That is correct. My sudden arrival scared the outlaw before scared the outlaw away before it could even steal even a bitty bit. I knew it was that thief they caught in the grounds. I see. So, so that's the course of events as you describe it. I've never said anything to the contrary. So if I may just recap. You were having a shower in the, in the bathroom when you heard the sound of glass shattering. 
Immediately after that, you heard Mr. Potsby scream. That's what you were telling us happened, are you? It's also what you said in your statement. Of course it is, because it's the truth, Inspector. Then I would have to say that you are a liar, Miss Potsby Mon. Well, a liar? Indeed, and there is a certain piece of evidence on the scene that will prove me right. Well, I'm all ears. This evidence really exists, and I'd sure like to see it. Why, it's, uh, the broken glass. Boom! Those bits of broken glass prove you're lying to us, Miss Potsmimon! Oh, that is hard wash. All these little piece, little big pieces of glass prove nothing of the sort. But you can't explain, Lucy. Tell Miss Potsmimon exactly what the gla broken glass reveals. The timing of the stabbing. Mm, boom! You only have to look at the broken glass to see the order of events that led to Mr. Potsby's death. What order of events? You claim you heard the window smash first and then your husband scream. But if that were the case, what are all these bits of glass doing on top of the body, eh? Ah. If your statement was true, the broken glass should be underneath the corpse. But they aren't, are they, Miss Potsbymon? They're on top. Which proves that the window was smashed after the victim was stabbed. So it would seem you have deliberately given a false statement. I have done no such thing. Why, well, I simply confuse matters in my head. I'm all torn up by the loss of my dear husband. This, simply misunder this simple misunderstanding proves nothing. I don't track my statement. I simply cannot remember I heard the scream of the glass breaking first. Uh, perhaps the outlaw came inside some other way and only smashed the window after killing my jack. Oh, you little weasel! Let's assume for a moment that you're indeed mistaken. That introduces a new complication. It does! Indeed. Because we know that the door and the window were both locked before the incident occurred. If the culprit didn't break the window, how did he or she get into the flat? Why, I have no idea! Just what are you trying to say, Inspector? What I'm trying to say is simple. We can now be sure that the true perpetrator of this crime is... Mm -hmm. Boom! You are you, Miss Goldby... Miss Goldie Potsby Mon! <laughs> did you get my name right? <laughs> no! At the time of the attack, the window and the door of the flat were locked. The only other way in were by smashing the window, but we know that happened after the victim died. With no, method, with no method of entry available, the only conclusion is the culprit did not come from the outside. No, the person who did this was in the flat from the outset. And the only person who fits that bill, Miss Potsby Mon, is you! Am I to understand that you are accusing me of murder because I was in my home the whole time? Aye, you are to understand that. Then I must remind you of something of vital importance that you appear to have overlooked. Oh, what's that? Not just a little itty thing called the murder weapon. I hear it told that you still not found it anywhere inside the apartment, which I never left. If I am accused of this crime, why, I would just love to know where I'm supposed to have put it. Indeed, I confess to having been stumped by that conundrum. Well, there you have it. You have not a shred of evidence that I killed my husband. However, we did eventually manage to locate the murder weapon. Huh? I, I beg your pardon? <laughs> Aye, that's right. We know exactly what you used to skewer your man. Uh, I do declare. Why, that, that's simply not possible. You didn't dispose of the murder weapon outside the flat. No, it's been there the entire time. You're starting to rile me, Inspector. Tell me where this murder weapon I'm supposed to have used is. Where is the clock? Here it is. Mm. Boom! The murder weapon were hidden in the clock! Well, are you quite sane? Sure as sure- Oh, sure, not sane. Sure as eggs are eggs, I. It was the minute hand of the clock that we used to kill Mr. Potsby! Well, that is hogwash. A man can never be killed with such a thing. Well, the shape of that hand matches the victim's wound perfectly. I, you haven't got long to wiggle your way out of this one. Friends is going over it with a fine tooth comb as we speak. Oh, speak of the devil. Hello? The shape of it? Well, it is almost. Do you admit it now? I don't think so, do you, Inspector? Professor! Professor! What's the matter? A result from forensics. They found not on it. No traces of blood whatsoever. Ma, ah, what a terrible shame. Your trunk car turned out to be a joker in the end. I do declare, I hate it when that happens. No, I must have missed something. Professor? Can I assume we're finally on the same page now, Inspector? That outlaw Nix is responsible for my husband's death and I'm no longer under suspicion. If you can just fill out those forms for me and with words to that effect. Forms? 
Well, my husband's life insurance simply will not pay without the proper pay paperwork, Miss Baker. Have you got no shame at all? We're talking about a man's life. Why, you have no idea what you are talking about, Missy. Jack doted on me. He he would turn in his grave if he thought his little pot of gold would not be mine after his death. Oh. Pots be gold mine. Mine. I, okay, I see now. How do you have the gold to say something like that? Oh, here we go. Killing for cash. Hmm, not a bad idea. I know it's like a completely different voice, but I really want to do it. Uh, professor, are you alright? But your motives are far, far darker than that, aren't they, Goldie? Don't get up on you with me now, Inspector. Oh, but you enjoy it, don't you? You kill for money, but it's not the cash you're after. It's the kick, isn't it? What are you on about, Professor? What's gotten into you? I can just imagine it. A little smile creeping onto your lips as you prepare the murder weapon. I will not fall into your petty trap, Inspector. You know, remind you that you still have not even found this murder weapon of which you speak. And we never will, because it no longer exists. Inspector, I do declare you have lost your mind. Are you suggesting that the murder weapon just vanished into thin air? You'd be delighted if that's what we're concluded. If, if that's what we concluded, wouldn't you? But let me put it another way. The murder, the weapon used to stab Jack Posby didn't exactly vanish. It melted. Eh? What? In a furnace or something? Oh, hang on. I think I get it now. I know what happened. The cooking pot. Boom! The metal weapon must have been melted in this pot. Oh yes, the weapon in that ki the weapon that killed Potsby disappeared in this very pot. I have no idea what you're talking about. I assure you, I was simply making my husband and I some pasta. Don't mock me! Where's the cutlery? Where are the bowls? The pasta sauce? There's no sign of any preparation of any meal at all. Just the pasta in this in this pot of boiling water. Uh, I intend to prepare those things later, but I don't think so. I don't think that pasta will ever meant for eating at all. No, the pasta was prepared for the sole purpose of the little disappearing act. Tell me by now you figured out what the murder weapon was, Lucy. Oh, I, I'm with you now, Professor. The murder weapon was... Why'd you lose your accent? Don't mind. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> A knife made of ice. Boom! Boom! Oh, here. A hundred percent! The weapon used to stab Jack Ponsby to death with a knife made of ice. It would have melted to not in no time at all in a, in a pot of boiling water like that one with the pasta in. Why, anyone with an ounce of horse sense can see it's just fiction fiction you've concocted. Even if there was a knife made of ice like you say, it's gone now, has it, has it not? My hands are clean. You can never prove I had such a weapon in my possession. Well, no, perhaps not, but, uh... <sighs> Professor? Yes, we can. Pardon me, Inspector. Get back to normal now, Professor. Yeah, sorry, Lucy. I'm fine now. Thank you. What are you two whispering about over there? We're discussing the ice knife. You are, of course, correct that the knife itself is no more. However, in order to make the knife in the first place, there was a mold. And that mold is still on the scene. I surely would like to see it. Lucy, do you know what was used? This, uh... Yeah, this slightly damp car. Boom! 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 And that heart is broken. Here yeah, with this damn piece of card that we used to mold the, the shape of the knife. Aye, you fold them back along the creases. Let's see what you get. Oh, look! A perfect knife shape! Yes, you lined the mold with cling film or the like, and then filled it and put it in the freezer to make your knife. We'd be able to m match the shape of the mold to that of the victim's wound, to be certain, of course. Why, something more than a coincidence. Anyone can see that. We have more evidence against you. After you stabbed your husband, you used the towel to wipe the blood off the knife. The towel was found on the balcony. Yeah, so once you were satisfied to remove all the blood, you put the icy weapon in the boiling water. But are you absolutely sure you removed every last trace? I'm sure I do not follow. In my experience, no one ever manages to remove all the traces of blood from a weapon. If you indeed dissolve the knife that killed your husband in boiling water, we will be able to positively identify the victim's blood when we examine the pot. Why, you little... L Lucy, would you have friends to go over the pot for us, will you? Straight away, Professor! I spoke with forensics. They're on the case. Now we merely need to wait for the results. 
Are you ready to admit to your crime now, Miss Potsbimon? I have no intention of admitting to anything, Inspector. Even if you can even if you can prove my husband was killed with a knife made of ice, it does not mean I did it. Oh no when you've had it, lass! I have had nothing, Miss Baker, other than my innocence questioned most unjustly. Unfortunately for you, there is no logical way in which you are not guilty. It will will cast your mind back. You showed there was no way into the flat when the incident took place, and the, the door and windows were locked. In other words, only somebody who was already inside could have stabbed Mr. Potsby. Oh, please! You admitted yourself that you did not leave the flat. In your own words, the apartment which I never left. No, I... I... Oh, is that another statement you, you would like to now retract? I must warn you, though, doing so is only likely to make things worse for you in the end, though. I demand to see my attorney. You cannot continue to question me in this way. Certainly, Lucy. Certainly. Lucy, make the necessary arrangements, please. Will do, Professor. Why, to be accused because of such a petty little thing. Mystery solved. Woo! We did it. And we got to see the debut of, uh... Well, <laughs> actually, I don't know. He doesn't have a name, so... Not yet, at least. Uh, I hope that... I, I don't know. She would have quite a fight, eh? I, I don't know his name, if they give him a name, but... Yeah, she did. I'm in a right tiz when the lab said they found not in the clock hand, I can tell you. <laughs> don't worry, Lucy, you weren't alone. It's a bit of a gamble as to whether they'll find any traces of blood in the pot in the pot of pasta as well. You're joking, aren't you? I'm pretty sure she's going to confess now, though. Pretty sure, eh? Alfendi, she's <laughs> admitted everything. What a relief! Seems she was after the man's life insurance. She told us as much when she was quite when we were questioning her. Would you believe? Oh, would you know this? We found out that Potsby won a a a a very large sum of money last year. That's when Miss Mon came into his life. Hardly coincidence. Hardly what you might call a coincidence. She was a real gold digger, eh? Well, it seems Miss Potsby was spending money like water. She was terrified he'd rack up as much debt as the insurance payout, so she had to murder him quickly. Sorry, I think I said he, not him. I see. So it was something of a rush job. She no doubt prepared better for her other spouses. So it's all done and dusted then? Fabulous! I must say, y'all, uh, you don't look very well. Are you alright? Probably that Je Jekyll and Hyde moment of yours. Uh, Probably the Jekyll and Hyde moment you had taken it out of you, eh, Professor? That's a bit of an exaggerated, exaggerated way of describing it, Lucy. But I do feel a little under the weather. I think I'll go home early if no one objects. Are you sure you'll be alright? There's nothing a bit of sleep won't cure, I'm sure. Can you close with the office when you leave? Consider it done. Eh, I hope he's alright. So it happened again, did it? Huh, you know about it then, Florence? About the professor? Whatever it's all about, eh? Calm down, Lucy. I really don't know all that much about it. You're safe as long as there's a criminal present. You don't hear that said every day. What I mean is the other owls only interested in criminals. He won't come in any harm. So he's got some kind of vendetta against criminals or something? Actually, from what I've seen, I'd say it's quite the opposite. He can't help liking them. All the more so, the more atrocious they are. Eh, I don't like the sound of that. There's really no cause for alarm. Like I said, as long as there's a criminal present, you're perfectly safe. What happens if he shows up when he chose the two of us, though? For me, I'd rip I'd rip up my drip and run like the wind. I I think I'll come in my in my plimsolls tomorrow. Case closed! Murder 3. <laughs> Case 3, not murder 3. A murder stage. We're gonna wrap it up for now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Stick around to see more of this awesome, awesome game. Holy! Four stars? And everything goes back down? Oh god, five stars. Anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna wrap it up here. I really enjoyed that case. Uh, I love seeing that other side of the professor. That was one of my that that was like what got me hooked on this game. It's actually what made me want to play it before on One Future. To be honest, I'm like I need to know more about this other side of the professor because I already love Alfendi as just a normal character, but him with this like awesome personality, I was like yes. Plus, I was like I really want to voice that. <laughs> but um, well, I no, nah, it just I can't do the, like the kind of creepy voice without. <laughs> with doing an accent, it would just not sound great. But, um, yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. See you all in the next video when we take on case three. Until then, I'll see you all later. Peace out.